are all welcome, so celebrate with us. We are all welcome, oh, we are all welcome, yes, we are all welcome, come celebrate with us. Let's have a party, yes, let's have a party, let's have a party, come celebrate with us. Let's have a party, yes, let's have a party, let's have a party, come celebrate with us. We are a family, yes, we are a family, we are a family, come celebrate with us. We are a family, yes, we are a family, yes, we Deacon Susan here. Welcome to everybody to Compassion Camp. I'm so glad that you're joining us for these wonderful stories the next few weeks. Um, I was just thinking how much, mm, oh, excuse me, I must be a little sleepy. Mm, yeah, yeah, just a little sleepy. Oh, mm, mm. I'm sorry, I'm still sleepy. I guess I'm yawning because I'm a little bit tired, right? Have you ever yawned when you've seen someone else yawn? People sometimes yawn when they see others yawn. Do you know why? According to scientists, even animals like chimpanzees do this. Let's do an experiment. I will yawn, and I want you to try to not to. See how hard it is. Did you, did you yawn, or did you not? Hmm. When we see someone yawn, or laugh, or cry, something in our brain responds. Because we know what it's like to be tired, or to feel laughter, or to be happy, or to be sad. That is called empathy. And we know what it is like to feel something. We become more compassionate toward each other. Compassion is kindness that we have towards our neighbors and our family and our friends. For example, if I step on a Lego or maybe something like a paper clip, it's going to hurt, right? Well, if I see someone else get ready to step on a Lego or a paper clip like this, I have felt it before, so I know what that person is going to go through. I have compassion for them. My empathy kicks in and reminds my brain of the hurt and suffering that happened under my foot when I stepped on the big clip or the Lego. If my compassion is strong, I might offer to help you, all of those of you who are in need. I might warn you to not step on the Lego because I know it hurts, or I might help you if you're sad or upset or even happy. That's what compassion is. I see your hurt. I feel your hurt, which is also called empathy, and I help ease your hurt. Throughout Compassion Camp, we're going to learn more about empathy, empathy and how we can help others and love others and be kind to others. But in order to show this to people, I need to see all of you. This is the beginning of Compassion. When we gather around a table, like at dinner time, or even a virtual table over Zoom, we look into each other's eyes or hear each other's voices. We are able to understand what others are he hearing, seeing, and feeling. That's why it is so important to welcome everybody to our table. That can be our kitchen tables. It can be the table of communion that we take on Sunday mornings or a lunch table at 
school or at the park or maybe a digital table online. When we welcome different people, we are able to show empathy. Remember that's knowing that the other person is hurting and we're able to show that we have compassion and kindness and grace for them. So today we are gonna learn about a family party where everyone was celebrating around a meal, but one family member wasn't too happy about this party. As we begin to learn more about compassion together, I want us to begin with a compassion prayer. So everybody put your prayer hands out. Place one hand on your head and one hand on your heart. We are doing this because compassion happens in our brains, but also we feel it in our hearts because that's what love is. Repeat after me, welcoming one, your warm, wide arms are always open, drawing us into your heart full of love. Make our arms your own, helping us see and welcome with compassion all those we meet. Amen. So let's learn about the story of the family today. This story is from the gospel, which is the good news, remember, one of the gospels called Luke. It is about a father and two brothers and how sometimes they didn't always get along. Jesus told this parable. There was once a man who had two sons. Do you have any brothers or sisters? So think about that when you're listening to the story. The younger brother greedily demanded his inheritance, which is what he gets from his father when his father dies. Turned his back on his family and he demanded it while his father was still alive also. And left them for a far, far away country. So he traveled by foot and by animal and maybe even cart to get far, far away from his family. He wasted all that money that he took from his family on frivolous things, eating out, staying in the fancy hotels, getting the best dresses and outfits and the best jewelry, and maybe even some bad things as well. Soon, he lost all of his money and became needy and hungry. Even though he felt ashamed, he decided to return home to his father, hoping that his father might welcome him back, even though he left them and spent all the money. When his father saw his son, the father was filled with compassion. The father ran out to his son and threw his arms around him. The father was so happy to see his son alive. Because remember, there wasn't cell phones or video chats or other ways that we keep in touch today. It was usually by letter and it took a long, long time. So this father had no idea what happened to his son or even if he was still alive and safe. So he was so glad. The father got a big party together with all the best food and all the best drink and gave thanks for his son's return. Meanwhile, the older brother came in from working in the fields all day, which is really hard work. He had stayed home with his father. He was tired. He was upset at his brother for leaving. And when he heard the family partying, the music playing, and seeing everybody dance, he became very angry and he refused to go in to see his brother and to listen to his father. The father went to the older brother to try to 
convinced him to come inside, but the brother continued to refuse. He said, I've listened to you and worked hard for you all of these years, and you've never given me a party. My brother comes home after wasting everything, and you throw him a huge party. That's not fair. The father said to the older son, I love you. What is mine is also yours. But people matter more than stuff, more than things, more than money, more than any of our possessions. We thought that we lost your brother, that he ran away and would never come home. But now he's here. Please come to the table and celebrate with us. In this story, the son was upset, maybe rightly so, because he was the one that stayed behind, the older son. He stayed behind and did all of the work while his younger brother went off having the time of his life, leaving home, leaving his responsibilities and coming back with basically nothing. I can understand how his son would, or the older brother would be upset, but guess what? The father had compassion on both of his sons. He understood how his older son felt, but he also loved his younger son so much that he welcomed him home with nothing, no anger, no resentment. We can learn a lot from the feelings of the people in this story. That is one way we can learn compassion. We see we listen and recognize what people are feeling. And this helps us to feel their joy and their hurt. So in this story, we had the father who was upset in the beginning that his younger son left, and then he was joyful when his son came home. Then he was upset at his older son and joyful maybe when his older son returned to the family. We have the younger brother who just went out living the time of his life. He probably wasn't angry with his family. He just wanted to go on, on an adventure. And he felt ashamed and he was upset and maybe a little bit hesitant to return home for fear of retaliation from his family. Then we have the older brother who was just plain angry. So we feel all of those emotions. Sometimes, Expressing our emotions or understanding other people's emotions in order to have compassion means we have to use our imaginations. Compassion helps us to see how every human being is important and loved by God. This week, you get to learn further how you are loved by God, how your emotions matter. There is a coloring sheet in the family packet. And let me take off the virtual background for a second. So there is a coloring sheet up in the family packet. There is also some wonderful activities that I've sent out, like a camp poster and an emotion sheet that you can work on with your younger youngers. But Right now, with your families, talk about what did the father see? Did you see what the father saw? What feelings did you feel when you heard the story? Who shows compassion? Those are all wonderful questions to ask each other in your family time tonight, in this week. Now, time to imagine because we don't hear the end of the story. Do you think the older brother came to the table and welcomed his younger brother home? Or do you think he continued to be angry and full of resentment? Who might have he sat with? Did he sit with his family? Did he sit with the hired hands or maybe some family friends that had been invited to the party? Now think about your own dinner table. During COVID, this has looked a little bit different. 
your own dinner table hasn't had extra guests at it like you might typically would or maybe you have you never know you can also invite people into your dinner table through zoom and through video chat as well but think about your own dinner table throughout the year who has come and visited you who has sat with you how do you welcome them how do you welcome someone when they've had a hard day or maybe when they don't want to sit at the table these are all important questions to ask when we have compassion for each other we want to welcome everybody but not everybody might reciprocate or share that back with us we still should be open and kind and loving and continue to invite them to the table like the father did with his so this week i encourage you to think about how you can be kind and loving and welcoming at your table maybe that's your physical kitchen table maybe that's dropping off some gifts for your friends or family or neighbors or a stranger maybe that's figuring out how to get engaged in the community in this in-between time that we're still in we, but there's so many ways that we can share compassion and i can encourage you to create your let's see you can't see it very well there we go your compassion chart and put it up the entire month that i was just talking about if you need a printed copy please let me know and then there's some also some activities and feelings here's our our happy and feeling sheet you can practice you can practice if you're happy or sad or angry or upset with you and your family members and maybe learn how to have compassion with each other at your table first learn to understand each other so these are all ways this week i encourage you to have compassion again remember compassion is about having kindness and love for other people by understanding them understanding what they're feeling what they're thinking what they're seeing and what they're experiencing this week continue to talk about the story of the father and the two brothers and how compassion is shown to us through that story let us pray gracious god we give thanks for your love and kindness and mercy we give thanks for those who welcome us to the table even when we've done something wrong or when we haven't been kind we pray that you can open our hearts so that we can welcome others in christ's name we pray amen until next time bye